How's it going everybody, KG here. Today I'll be your guide throughout the whole entire LG OLED lineup. Let's say that you've already narrowed it down and you want one of these LG OLED TVs, but you don't know what series to get, which one is going to be the best value for you, and which one is going to fit you the most in terms of what you need for your TV. So we're not only going to look at the 2023 models in this video, but we're also going to compare them a little bit to the 2022 counterparts. We'll look at features and pricing to decide which one is going to be the best for you at the end of the day. I will be putting the links for these TVs in the description below. These are affiliate links, so please consider using them if you do find this video helpful. Thank you so much for your support. Alright, so without further ado, let's get into the whole entire lineup. First, I'm going to explain how to read these model numbers and what they mean to you at the end of the day. And right after that, we'll go in depth on each model. Alright, so when we're looking at these TVs, you want to pay attention to the letter and then the number that's right after it. So if you see a 1, it's going to be a 2021 model. If you see a 2, that's going to be a 2022 model. And if you see a 3, that's going to be a 2023 model. Before the numbers, you will see a letter. This letter will pretty much tell you what series TV it is. The A series is going to be the more budget series TV, the 60 hertz panel, but this has been cut for 2023, more on that later. The next one is going to be the B series. This is now the entry level OLED TV for 2023. This is what I like to call the between series. And this is going to have some of the features that the C series has, but a little bit cut down. And the next one is going to be the C series, which I think is going to be the one that's familiar to most people. I like to think of the C series as the consumer series. The C series usually gives you the latest and greatest in software enhancements, as well as some advancements in the technology. For example, the C series has the Alpha 9 Gen 6 processor, just like the G2. However, you don't get the latest panel technology that's going to be in the TV. Next up is the G series. The G series stands for the gallery series. This is LG OLED's most premium 4K OLED TV that you can buy in 2023. The G series will get the best technology advancements that LG OLED has to offer to you and you get extra benefits like an included mount and an included 5 year panel warranty. Now let's go into each series, talk about the prices and the differences between 2023 and 2022 so we can help you make a better decision. We'll start with the C series, then we'll move on to the G series, and then we'll move on to the B and the A series. And then to wrap it up, I'll give you my advice on where I would go with LG OLED TVs in 2023. First, I want to start with the most popular series, and that is going to be the LG C series. This is going to be by far one of the most recognized series of the whole entire lineup. But there's a few things that you got to keep in mind this year that are a little bit different from last year. The biggest difference between the C3 and the C2 this year is going to be the processing. The processing is going to make the picture appear brighter than last year's model as they have made some processing improvements. Now this won't result in actual peak brightness improvement if you measured it, but don't focus too much on measurements anyway because really it's all about what you're seeing in the first place. And that's what LG is going to deliver with this processing upgrade. Aside from that, you're only going to see a couple of general improvements with the menu and a couple of other things that are relating to it being a 2023 OLED as opposed to a 2022 OLED. So typical year to year jumps in terms of that kind of thing. But when it comes to technology and capability, not much really changed on the LG C series this year. You're really only going to buy this if you want the new features and you kind of want that higher perceived brightness for the C3. But remember, that's going to come at a cost and we're going to go over the prices right now. So here's what the C3 is launching at. For the 42 inch size, you're looking at $13.99. For the 48 inch size, you're looking at $14.99. The 55 inch size is $18.99. The 65 inch size is $25.99. The 77 inch size is $35.99 and the 83 inch size is $52.99. You can see in the picture that I've included how this compares to last year's launch prices. If you compare that to today's C2 prices, well, it's quite a significant difference. And for a lot of people, it's going to make more sense to go with the LG C2, especially if you're not too tied up in the upgrades this year, because really it's going to be very similar across the whole entire board. And if you put these two TVs side by side, I'd be surprised if you've seen a significant difference in those two TVs. So for most buyers, I'll recommend that you get the C2 over the C3 early on. But once the prices drop a little bit towards Black Friday, then the C3 is going to make a lot more sense for more buyers. But I know some of you guys are going to want the latest and the greatest of the C series because you do that usually when the C series comes out. And for those people, I suppose you can make a case for the LG C3, but I think those people might want to look in the direction of the LG G3 this year because that 
is where the new improvements are. That is where the big improvement is when it comes to technology. We're looking this year at the G-Series, and this is introducing MLA, which is also known as Meta Technology from LG Display. This is a really big advancement for OLED TVs, as it is combining the OLED panel with MLA technology. This is going to result in LG's best OLED TV yet, and their brightest OLED TV yet, I saw this TV at CES and I thought it was very bright and colorful and it reminded me kind of of an OLED from last year that I saw the QD OLEDs from Samsung Display. So if LG can get close to that, I think they got a really good TV on their hands with the G3. In the 55 inch you have $24.99, 65 inch you have $32.99, 77 inch you have $44.99, and 83 inch you have $64.99. Now it's really, really, really important to note that the 83 inch size is not going to have this MLA technology that I was talking about just a second ago. This is not going to have a brighter screen like the other models. I have to be 100% clear on that because it might not be clear when you're looking at these TVs in the store. I also should note that the 77 inch size launching at $44.99 is the same price tag as the Samsung S95C QD OLED and if I had to guess this will be the case with the 55 and 65 inch as well. And if you're curious to see which TV is going to be better among those two, I'll definitely be putting them side by side on my channel so make sure you are subscribed to the channel if you don't want to miss that. Alright so you can see that the LG G2 prices are on the screen right now as well. And how does the LG G2 compare to the G3 this year? Well if you take LG's word for it, the LG G3 blows the LG G2's brightness out of the water. And tech journalist John Archer also said that the G3 made the G2 look like it was in eco mode. So that might be something to take in mind when we're talking about these two TVs. So a really important detail that I can't forget to mention about LG G series TVs is that it includes a wall mount and not a TV stand. So that might be something you have to plan around. That's right, you have to buy your own TV stand or you're going to have to buy LG's TV stand which they charge $200 for. The one that they show in the pictures. One other thing is that they also include a five-year panel warranty with your LG G series purchase. So what about the G2? Is that still worth getting? I'd say for most people, no, probably not. In my opinion, if you're looking at the G2 to save some money over the G3, you should just look at the C2 to be honest with you. When I saw them side by side, the C2 to the G2, not a huge difference there. But I think when you're looking at the G3 next to the G2, you'll definitely see a difference this year. So if you're looking at the G2 for the fact that you just want a really good bright OLED TV, definitely shift your mindset towards the G3. It is more of a premium, but you are going to get the best of the best when it comes to LG OLED TVs this year. But no doubt about it, those TVs are really expensive and a lot of the average buyers aren't going to be looking at that TV. A lot of them might be looking at the C3, but I think instead they should look towards this next model, the LG B3. The way I look at it, if you put an LG B3 next to an LG C3, the chances of you actually noticing much difference is kind of low to be honest with you. I've seen a B series next to a C series for years and years now and every year it ends up looking almost the same as the C series and the only time you can really tell a difference is in certain scenes and also when it comes to the color banding on the TV. So if you're somebody who plays a lot of video games maybe you're going to look more towards the C series because you'll have to deal with some more color banding on the B series because smooth gradation which is going to be a feature that gets rid of that does not work in game mode, or at least it hasn't in the last LG OLED TVs that I've tested. Now, will they fix that this year? Likely not, but that's something to keep in mind. So if you are going to be bothered by color banding, then maybe look at the C series. But those of you that aren't really gaming as much or probably won't notice that when they're gaming, then maybe look at the B series because you still have smooth gradation that works really well on the B series. And this will clean up most posterization and color banding issues that you might have with the TV. So the B series is actually a really good TV and I think most buyers will be liking this TV just as much as they would like a LG C series TV. That said, if you're looking at the B3, then chances are that you should look at the B2 because there's not going to be a huge jump from year to year with that model either. So if you're just looking for a really good entry level to OLED TVs, you still want 120 hertz, 
then the B2 does make a lot of sense for a lot of people and you can see the prices for that here. So don't discount this B series TV. And then while we're on the same topic, I wanna let you know that the A series TV, if you're in the North American market, is not going to be coming out in 2023. So if you're looking for an A series TV, which is the 60 Hertz panel, you're only going to be able to find it in last year's A2 series. Now, will this series make sense for you? I think if you're not gaming, you don't need 120 Hertz and you're just looking for an entry to OLED TVs, maybe at the right price tag, the A-Series does make sense for you. I've heard a lot of people say great things about the LG A2, and the price tags that you can see these TVs at sometimes are definitely worth it over the counterparts when it comes to like what your general usage for the TV might be, then A2 might make more sense than any of the models I've talked about today. So which TV should you get? Well, I think it really just depends on what kind of person you are and what TV do you need for your needs. I would say, look, if you want the latest and the greatest, you want the brightest OLED possible, the G3 is really the only way to go here. If you just want something that's going to be a really good OLED and you're going to have 120 hertz, the latest and greatest features, the best processing features, the C3 might make some sense for some people. But realistically, I would go with the C2 if you're buying early because you're getting some of the better deals right now, especially in the next couple of weeks once they all start to release. Then you can see the C2 hit some of its lowest prices yet. Now, those of you that aren't doing a ton of gaming and you're going to watch a lot of movies and TV shows, I think the B series, you can get away with that over the C series for most people and you're going to be saving money that way. Whether or not you want the 2022 version or the 2023 version, that's really just going to depend on you at the end of the day. I would just say get the one that's cheaper because in reality, it's going to almost give you the same image across the board. So for that, I would say get the cheapest one possible. And those of you that are in a bedroom or you only watch a lot of cable and you're just needing 60 hertz, it's okay to go with the A2. It isn't as bright as the other series TVs, but in a dark room when you're watching it at night, it really won't matter that much and the A2 is good enough for most people. So I would say just stay within your means and get the one that you need for yourself. And since a lot of people clicked on this video to hear what I would do, me personally, I would say that most buyers should gravitate towards the G3 if they want premium. And if you're more interested in the C3, I would look at the C2 until about Black Friday time. Then you can look at the C3 where I think the prices will start to be a little bit more comparable. And if size is a concern, if getting a 65 inch B2 is going to be the same price as getting a 55 inch C2, just get the B2. In my opinion, there's just not a significant difference between these two to justify giving up size. That's where I would go with my advice, and hopefully that helps you out a little bit. But I would love to know what you guys are thinking. Which one are you going to end up going with? And did this video help you? If you guys have any questions at all, make sure you leave them in the comments below. And if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing for more future content just like this. And if you want to see more videos on OLED TV, I think you'll like this video right here.